Let's turn now to our Senate debate with Democrat Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota and Republican Johnny Isaacson of Georgia. And Senator Klobuchar, let me begin uh, with you. You just heard Congressman Hutchinson there. What's your response to the gun debate right now? Well, you know, George, I'm a former prosecutor, and I oversaw efforts with our school safety with 25 major high schools. And I have to say that this is part of the equation, uh, that we have to look at this just as we look at all issues and see if there's other things we can do to help local communities with school safety. But we have to go beyond that, because we know we can't have an armed guard at every doorway, at every classroom. And so you have to look at the fact that a lot of these mass shootings have taken place in houses of worship, they've taken place in movie theaters. And so looking into the larger debate, as Senator Manchin and other more conservative uh, senators who've been supported by the NRA in the past have pointed out, look at the things like high-capacity magazines. Putting some limits on that uh, could be part of the solution, but not the only solution. The background checks. My Republican sheriff was in to see me. We talked about the fact that 19 states have only submitted less than 100 records on mental illness, on criminal backgrounds. That's what we're talking about here is looking at making sure we go after what seems to be the common thread through these mass shootings, which is people with severe mental illnesses getting hold of guns and, in some, at some points, assault weapons, guns that literally uh, can shoot three to 11 bullets into one child, which is what we saw uh, in Newton. And I will say, in what we saw in Newtown uh, is one thing. But I also understand in my state, which is a state that loves our hunting and fishing, that we have to do this in a way that isn't going to take the guns out of the hands of our hunters, out of the hands of my uncle in his deer stand. And I don't think that's going to happen if we look at these common sense solutions. But we have an opportunity now to move forward and get all these ideas on the table. Uh, and as long as we move quickly, get the ideas together, we're going to have hearings in the Judiciary Committee. I think we have an opportunity Senator, to do something. Senator Isaacson, are you willing to put those ideas on the table? Well, Ms. Klobuchar just made a very good uh, re remark about mental health. That is the common thread that's run through all these school shootings. When I was in the Georgia State Senate in 1995, I was part of the Congress Committee that wrote the background check law that's available in Georgia today. But she's right. Very few of these mental health registries actually work. So we've got to improve that to make sure that common thread no longer exists. And, but, and, but are you willing to consider the other proposals that she just discussed? Broader background checks, a federal background check, some restrictions on high capacity magazines. I'm happy for a commission to look into every aspect. I want to remind you, George, in fact, I think you were in the White House in 94 when the assault weapon ban passed, and Columbine took place in 1999, five years into that ban, which has now expired. So bans alone don't solve the problem. Senator Klobuchar? Well, when you look at what happened in Colorado, where we had their high-capacity magazine, and you look at what happened in Newtown, uh, both of those situations, and of course, it's not going to be the same in every situation, in every tragedy, uh, but both of those uh, involved those types of guns. And if we can do something to limit them, and if we can get some bipartisan agreement, I think we can move forward on that. Uh, we had a shooting in Minnesota, a small business, you know, six people gunned down uh, with an employee that clearly had a mental illness. I should not have had access to those guns. Every situation is different. But when you look at some of the last few shootings, they did involve those kinds of high-capacity magazines. And I think that has to be part of the equation in addition to looking at the background checks. The stat that I always remember is came from the uncle of a little girl that was killed in Newtown. And that uncle who lives in Minnesota said that there were once 10 girls in the Girl Scout troop of his niece, and now there's only five. Let me turn now to the fiscal cliff discussion. We saw those talks between the House Speaker and President Obama collapse this week. All eyes now on the Senate. And I want to show what the President called for before he left uh, for his Christmas holiday on Friday afternoon. Here's the President. All of us, every single one of us, agrees that tax rates shouldn't go up for the other 98% of Americans. So there is absolutely no reason, none, not to protect these Americans from a tax hike. Senator Isaacson, he says that every, every Republican, every Democrat in Washington says everyone earning under $250,000 should not get a tax hike. So he wants to put that on the floor along with an extension of unemployment benefits. It's some relief from this question that's supposed to hit January 1st. Any chance you could support that, Senator Isaacson? 
Well, I felt like the House should have gone ahead and passed uh, Speaker Boehner's bill because it addressed the subject and we'd still be in negotiation. And the President's statement is right. No one wants taxes to go up on the middle class. I don't want them to go up on anybody. But I don't, I'm not in the majority in the United States Senate, and he's the President of the United States. If we get down to the end of this year and the only choice we have is to save taxes going up on the middle class, then I would support that. But I wish we would have a comprehensive bill that dealt with spending, dealt with entitlements, and dealt with taxes all together. That's really what we ought but to do. But is that still realistic with, with, with time so short right now? It's not realistic, but it was realistic December 1st when we had a lot of time. Unfortunately, we've killed a lot of time politically while the talk clock was ticking. It's time for us to get down to work and do the people's business. Well, Senator Klobuchar, you just heard Senator Isaac said, say he would support a bill like that if it came to the floor, even though it's not his first preference. Is that what you expect your leader, Senator Reid, to bring to the floor? Uh, well, we have already passed that in the Senate, as you know, George, for um, keeping the uh, tax cuts in place for the middle class, people making under 250000 a year. And as you know, if we go back to the Clinton levels for people making over 250000 we literally save a trillion dollars in 10 years. But I will say, Johnny Isaacson is a guy I like a lot. And you can see his willingness to talk about things in the middle is what we need in Washington. And the main thing that needs to happen here is that Speaker Boehner and the House of Representatives have to come back to Washington. The Senate is coming back on December 27th. Uh, I think, you know, most members are used to spending that Christmas to New Year's at home in their home states. It is time to get back to the table. And I hope if anyone sees these representatives uh, from the House in line shopping or getting their Christmas turkey, they wish them a Merry Christmas, they're civil, and then they say go back to the table, not your own table, the table in Washington, because middle class people shouldn't have their taxes go up an average of $2,000 a year. And we also should start making some meaningful reform on the debt. And I would love to see a bigger deal. I'd like nothing more and there's always miracles it's christmas <laughs> miracle on 34th street it might take a miracle, have a to miracle get that. on it pennsylvania might, avenue that might take a miracle but senator Eisen, you've been pretty confident all year long this fiscal cliff would not we wouldn't go off the cliff the taxes would not go up on everyone the sequester would not kick in do you still have that confidence or do you think it's a greater possibility right now I sold houses for 33 years, George. I'm an eternal optimist, but time is running out. And the truth of the matter is, if we do fall off the cliff after the president's inaugurated, he'll come back, propose just what he proposed yesterday in leaving Washington, and we'll end up adopting it. But why should we put the markets in such turmoil and the people in such misunderstanding or lack of confidence? Why don't we go ahead and act now? Okay, that so sounds like both, both senators want some action there. Finally, on the president's national security team, and I want to start with you, Senator Isaacson, because you are on the Senate Foreign Relations uh, Committee. Senator Kerry, the president's pick for Senate for Secretary of State. Uh, but several of your colleagues have raised questions about the possibility of Chuck Hagel, your former colleague from Nebraska, uh, being uh, Secretary of Defense. John Cornyn has said he would oppose that nomination because of Senator Hagel's views on Israel and, and other issues. Would you have any problem with that nomination of Senator Hagel or, for that matter, Senator Kerry? Well, I have no problem at all with John Kerry. I've served with him for four years on the Foreign Relations Committee. He's done outstanding work, particularly in the Middle East. He's been a great envoy and a great diplomat for the United States, and I think he'll do a great job as Secretary of State. As far as Mr. Hagel's concerned, I served with him in the Senate, but he hasn't been nominated yet, George, and I'll reserve any judgment until after the hearings we have on confirmation if, in fact, he is nominated. Senator Klobuchar, on, on Senator Hagel, uh, even the top Democrat on the House Foreign Affairs uh, Committee, Elliot Engel, has said that he has severe issues with, uh, Secretary, with the possibility of a Secretary Hagel because of what he called his endemic hostility towards Israel. Do you share those concerns? Well, again, I would to see what uh, happens through these hearings. I intersected a brief period of time with Senator Hagel. He has a lot of respect. Let's see who the president nominates. And I did want to say John Kerry uh, warded the Purple Heart in Vietnam, someone who has led the Foreign Relations Committee, someone who has uh, shown the ability to get tough things done, like the Nuclear Arms Treaty a few years back, really will follow in the footsteps of a superb Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. And the president has put together in the past a very good national security team. I'm sure he'll do so again. Senators, thanks very much for your time this morning. Have a great holiday. Good luck solving this problem when very you come good. back on Thursday. Well, we'll Merry see Christmas, you back George. in Washington soon. <laughs> okay. Merry Christmas, Johnny.